Welcome back, ladies, to another episode of Relaxing to Love. I am your host, Teal Elizabeth, and today I want to talk about anxiety. Anxiety and people-pleasing. And I guess to go even deeper than that, the self-confidence that gets eaten away because of our anxiety and people-pleasing. And this has just been something that's been coming up and coming through for me, so I felt like it was just important to talk through. Um, Because I think it's something that people battle with a lot, right? The the concept of anxiety and the concept of people-pleasing. And it's really been triggered for me lately in social media and Instagram. And I really do feel like at some point, like 10 years, 20 years down the road, scientists are going to come out and they're going to be like, oh my God, like the, the health effects of social media on human psyches is like just as dangerous and detrimental as like smoking was back in the 60s and 70s. Like it is, it's a really, really dangerous, dangerous thing, but I think we're just not aware of it. And the dilemma comes is that it is also such a beautiful platform. It's such a beautiful pl- platform to be able to speak truth and speak your message to the world. And I really, really believe that everybody has a message. And this kind of, <laughs> this is really like highlighted for me when I watched that movie, A Star is Born. I don't know if you guys watched that. Oh, oh my God. It's the most amazing, amazing movie ever with Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. But I remember there being such a moment in there and such a, such a message that came through for that that was like, it really, really, I remember Bradley Cooper was like reminding Lady Gaga, like, you have a message to share with the world. Like, don't conform to everybody else. Don't become this pop star idol that they're trying to make you fit into being in a box. Like, you are meant to serve a message to the world. And that is what music is. It's a platform to do that. And I just feel like that is so true. That is so true in the world. And Instagram can be that way. It can be a way for us to really post our presence, post who we are, speak our truth, especially for me, like speak my messages. But I too very much can get caught up in this like total rat race of trying to fit in and trying to be a certain way and trying to match up what all the other coaches are doing out there. And I just had this realization not even realization, just but just this come to Jesus moment with myself where it's like, what are you doing? Right? Like, no, 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 no. And it, it there's so much underlying people pleasing that comes in. It's like, I want people to like me. I want to be accepted. I want to feel worthy that my you know, my voice matters. And and I know that this is not just for me. This is for each of us, right? And and I know that a lot of what, what I talk about is regards to relationship with men, but this is going to be more of a, a concept and a talk about just self-love and self-confidence within ourselves and, and how we choose to show up in the world. And a lot of this, if we're not aware of it, can get swept up into our mind, right? And swept up into this just race of our of our mind and our ego and our mind chatter and that's really what anxiety is anxiety is just your mind being on hyper overdrive where it has not been disciplined and it is lazy literally you have if you are struggling with a lot of anxiety it's that you have a very lazy mind and the fact that it has not been trained and disciplined into being able to calm itself and relax and sometimes we put on a timeout. Like that's really seriously what we need to do sometimes with our mind is just say, hey, you know what? I I hear you, but I got this. You know, you can go take a timeout and I'm gonna go take over. But if we don't realize that there is this mind chatter going and we're just swept up into it, then our emotions get into that as well and we get attached to the feelings and the thoughts that are just like on overdrive rampage. And then we can't relax and we just get trapped, literally trapped in our mind. And it's a really, really like scary place to be. If you, if you struggle with anxiety, like I feel you girl and, and I completely honor where you're at in your journey. And I just want you to really know that this can be worked through. And this is something I help women through all the time to be able to really calm that mind chatter and calm that anxiety and and literally dissipate it like to be instead of being 100% or 90% of your your everyday operating system like drastically dropping that down to 5 10% you know it, it won't always go away because there is some importance in anxiety anxiety is really there to help us to be an indicator to also say hey you know what something doesn't feel right something feels off something doesn't feel safe like we need to sort this out that's really where anxiety can be good and really helping to communicate what is deeply going on. But when we let anxiety be the full-on runner of the show 
for our entire life as our operating system, it is exhausting and it is really draining and it's not healthy and it can be very toxic and it can keep us very, very disconnected from our hearts. And that's really just such an important aspect to all of this is really recognizing, oh my God, I think I might be really cut off from my heart right now because I don't even give my heart a chance to speak. You know, I may get a little tiny gut feeling or I may have a little instinct that something feels off, but to really like turn off the brain or let it go sit on time out for a little while so that you can give yourself the space to just breathe and heal and feel your heart, like that takes practice and that takes work. And that is a huge part of the work that I do um, with women is helping them to hold that container for them to get out of their head and into their heart. But just speaking on this concept of, of anxiety and people pleasing, like it is such a, a natural, natural part of our life. And I, and I want to speak to that too, because it's not like we all just are, are operating in this way for no reason. Like there's a very specific reason why we feel the need to please others. And that comes from a place of feeling a deep, deep feeling of needing to feel safe, right? And this stems back all the way to the caveman days when we were living in tribes and, you know, we, we really depended on the people in our tribe for survival because if we were ostracized from the group and we were left to be all by ourselves, like we would die, right? We would die. <laughs> so there is something that is still within our reptilian brain that is that very archaic part of ourselves, the instinctual part of ourselves that is basically triggered every time someone rejects us, every time someone says, eh, I don't really like you, or I don't really like that about you, it triggers this feeling, this very deep instinctual urge of, oh my God, I'm going to die, right? I better go do something. I better shift. I better change who I am or how I'm operating so that I don't get ostracized from my tribe. So whew, that's why it's such a deep stemming thing for so many of us, this, I, this feeling of people pleasing. But the problem is, is that we haven't actually caught up with the modern day within our brain, within our heart. And we are still operating from this deep, deep system of, of fear when really in our reality, that's not the case, right? We're not going to die if we're ostracized from a group. We're not, we're not going to get die if someone, we're not going to die if someone doesn't like our post or doesn't follow us, right? So we just have to, or even like, we're not going to die if, if a guy dumps us or rejects us, but like, that's how deep of a carnal fear it can be. And what, what really can happen if we do bring this into relationships with men is like, we end up shifting a lot of the ways that we are operating of, of, of what is most truest in alignment to ourselves so that we are still accepted and saved by this, this man in our presence, because heaven forbid he rejects us and we are left alone to die right? Really powerful, really powerful to recognize and to just kind of become more aware of. And so if you're in a relationship right now with somebody that it's not giving you everything you want and need, but you are deeply afraid to leave or walk away or stand up for what you need because of fears of rejection, like just really start to think about this. Like, is this part of the reason why? Is it triggering something deeper within you? Like what fears, what voices are really, really coming forth right now being like you you can't you no this is scary no you need to hold on you need to keep pleasing him you need to find a way to make this work right there is so much deeper stuff that I, that it, you know when you uncover it you can really begin to take your power back and it's really really important to take your power back because otherwise we are we are giving our power away to the deeper fears that are underneath the surface and we're giving our power to other people and looking to other people to complete us or to make us feel good about ourselves or to make ourselves feel whole. And when we do that, we're actually just putting out this very icky vibration into the world. It's a feeling of just like, I'm not 100% secure in who I am. And so I need to look to you to make me feel secure in who I am, or I need to bend over backwards to please you and make you feel good so that I can get the validation that I need, that I'm a good person, right? There's so many layers to it, but it's just out. It's just wrapped with just baggage, just icky baggage. And it's just heavy, right? Like imagine how freeing it would be to be able to just say, you know what? F this, F all of this. Like, 
I don't need it. I'm completely free. I release it. I, I let go of the boxes. And I, I actually want to read you something. It was a post I wrote on, on Instagram. And it was honestly one of, one of many posts I've been practicing writing lately that is just truly not giving a rat's ass who even reads it or who even listens to it, just really speaking it from my heart for, from what I need and what I'm really going through for myself. And so I want to read it with you because it just after I poured out of me, I was just like, hell yeah, like, this is so it. This is so what everybody needs to be able to come into to truths with themselves and, and to really be able to feel deep within themselves. So I'm going to read it out to you and feel free to, to repeat it after me. So it goes like this. Repeat after me. I am who I am and I fucking love it. And I'm sorry, by the way, that I swear. It's just it, when I get really charged up and really fired up, these words just really speak to me. And there's such a power in, in these words, even, even if they are cuss words. I hope I'm not offending you, but that's who I am and I fucking love it. <laughs> I release the need to pretend to be someone I'm not. I release the feeling of having to or shitting on myself. I release the chase, the rat race, the box that I've been living in up until now. I am who I am and I love it. I love the cheesy, carefree playfulness that pours out when I'm happy and feeling safe. I love the power and presence that I connect to within my soul that enables me to share truths with those who need to hear it. I love the resiliency and never-ending determination that kicks in when I feel really ready to dominate any goal I have. And I'm so done, so tired of getting caught up in the mind, the ego, the attachment to outcomes. I release it all to you, Source. I surrender. I trust and deeply know that my truest essence and power comes when I am relaxed, in love, in presence, in abundance. And from now on, that is my North Star. That is my source of truth. I let go of needing to be perfect or following strategies confining me into boxes. Bye-bye, internal pressure. You are no longer serving me, and I release you. Ah, sweet surrender. And now what? Oh yes, the quiet stillness. I release the fear that comes up from within that stillness. I release the need to know how life will unfold. The universe has my back, and that's all I need to trust. Yeah, really, really just mm, just gives me so much energy just like reading this and, and speaking this into presence. And, and I hope that this really just kind of lights a little fire under you as well, babe, because there is so much power that comes through when we decide to take our power back, when we decide to not let our external reality have more control over how we feel than our internal reality. And that really comes from first the awareness piece of just where am I giving my power away? Where is there energy leaking out of me that needs to be plugged up, right? And where do I need to come back to to make sure that I can find that power within myself? And sometimes that's scary to do and that's hard to do. And and sometimes if we've had so many experiences in our life, We've, we've lost a lot of that power, and, and I completely understand that. You know, I've had women come to me, they're like, Teal, I, I feel like the fire within me has just died, completely died, or I feel like it has become really, really dimmed and diminished, and I'm scared, and I don't know how to get it back, right? And what I would say is, like, I completely honor you, and I've got you, and I can support you with this, but right now, the first thing to do with this is to just start to recognize where am I giving my power away? Where am I looking to external things to make me feel good about myself or external people to make me feel good about myself? And how do I actually let that go and let go of needing to please and needing to feel validated by others and coming back to how do I really validate myself? How do I really turn that inward and look inside myself to feel whole and complete. Because newsflash, we cannot be in a truly happy, fulfilling relationship and healthy relationship with a partner until we get this stuff sorted out. Like, it's just not going to happen. We have to make sure that we are coming into relationships from a deeply whole and complete feeling within ourselves, where we are not looking anywhere externally for, for this sense of validation. 
And it was really beautiful, actually. I remember early on when I was dating Spencer, this was actually something he brought up to me. He's so evolved. (laughs) He's so evolved in so many ways. I just adore him so much. But I was in this place where I was in a little, I was in a total crazy, anxious little girl mode, you know, and it was early on we were dating and we were doing the dating thing, but he was still very much living his own life and I was living my life and I was craving so much to be near him and I wanted more more from him and, and we'd like see each other on the weekends and it was good, but then we'd like not talk, literally not talk all week and then we'd like see each other again on the weekends and then not talk, but it was never established like when I'd see him next. So I felt like just so lost and so out of control and so feeling like I was always like just waiting for him to be like, okay, yeah, I'd like to see you this Saturday and I was like, okay, good, now I can feel good about myself again, you know? That's a shitty place to feel. That's a shitty place to be. And it wasn't until I started to to realize within myself, like, I got to take my power back. And he even recognized that. He's like, Teal, I can't make you happy, right? You've got to make yourself happy. And I was like, oh, crap, you're right. Like, no, yeah, I can't be looking to him to make me happy. Like, I have to go and find the things within myself to make me happy. And so even though I felt uncomfortable about it, even though deep within me, I was like, I just really want to be around him. You know, I love being around him. I feel my best self when I'm around him. I decided, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not going to be waiting around for him. I'm not going to be holding out hope that he's going to call me and want to see me. Like I'm going to go do stuff that makes me happy. And so I did, I went and I found a dance studio. And for me, dancing is a huge part of this. It's like, I feel so connected to myself when I can fully express myself through dance. And I found this cute little studio with like mirrors and all like all sides of the room and nice wood floors and a big sound speaker system that I could plug into my phone. And, and I would just go there like whenever I felt like I needed to just reconnect or I was feeling that need for external validation. And I would go in there and I'd just turn on the music that I loved and I would just dance. And I knew that like, it didn't matter. I wasn't performing for anyone. I was truly just expressing my heart and allowing myself to be with me and fill myself up. And it was the most validating experience. And I still do this when I need it. And I'm getting to the point now where I'm trying to be able to do that. Even when like I'm at the gym to still like dance and be like, I don't care. I don't care. You can watch me dance. Yeah, I look great. Like (laughs) still working on that. You know, it's always still a little bit of like, but, but really giving yourself a space that feels safe to you where nobody can be there and you just give to you is so, so powerful. And I remember walking out of those dance studios and it was like, I was in such a different mood and I really didn't care. I was like, yeah, I'll see him when I see him. I trust, I trust. Like if he wants to see me, he's going to see me. He's going to reach out. I don't need to worry, right? I don't need to give my power to him and worry that I'm not good enough and that he's going to leave me or that he's going to lose interest. Like, no, I'm a freaking amazing person. I just danced for an hour and just like came up with this amazing routine, right? Like who wouldn't want to be around that? And another newsflash If for some reason I was doing all of that stuff and feeling so expressed and so amazing and so beautiful in who I was and he still left or he still quote unquote rejected me or he still or he decided that I wasn't really worth it in his eyes and he wanted to go and date somebody else. Like what is that really saying? It's not saying anything about you not being good enough or me not being good enough in that moment. It's just a reflection that that we don't match, right? And that that's not what he's really wanting from a partner. And thank you. Thank goodness. Like if he had left and, and thank goodness he didn't leave, but if he had left and he'd said, yeah, I actually don't want a fully expressed partner. I don't really want someone that can go and have their own life and be their own person and feel 100% complete and full in who they are then obviously that's not the person for me and I wouldn't want that anyways, right? So this is so big and so important. So anytime that you're starting to feel like less than or not good enough or not worthy of attention from men, remind yourself to flip the switch, flip the scales and come back to what the real truth is. The real truth is you are the only person that can make you feel good enough. And you are the only person that can make you feel whole and complete. And as soon as we start looking to somebody else or something else to make that happen, we are giving our power away. And we have to flip that on its head and get back to the source of truth. And you know, it's so interesting. I was just, as I was journaling this morning, I was like recognizing, I was like, because I kept writing the word true and I kept writing the word um, truth, true and truth, true and truth. And I was like, huh, they have the same root. They literally have the same root of true and truth. 
So really, when we are being in our most truest essence, we are being the truth, and we are connected to the truth, and we are in alignment with the truth. Isn't that beautiful? It's like, mind blown. (laughs) Totally mind blown. But it's true. Ha! (laughs) This is your highest alignment. When you feel in your most truest essence, you are in your truth. Oh, that feels so amazing. I just want to just give us a moment of silence to let that sink in. Yeah. And so anyone that can't see that and can't honor that and can't respect that is not in the truth alignment of your truest essence. Right? What a relief. What a relief to be able to really just let that be. And to let you be the truest essence of who you are. And honestly, what you can do is once you really start to let this all sink into yourself, you can start to realize, huh, okay, so I need to do a full life audit of all the people in my life, right? All the people that are either looking to me to validate them or that I'm looking to validate me. Like, it's time to purge all of them and just release, 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 release. And truly just allow people in that see you in your brilliance and honor you in your brilliance and love you in your brilliance of your truest self. But you can't let those people in until you really get to that place within yourself. So, who? Yeah, that is, that is the truth, truth bomb today. And I will tell you that, well, two things. One, your anxiety will literally dissipate so much overnight once you start to really get into the truest essence of who you are. Because the mind and the anxiety, like I said from earlier, is just trying to tell you something. It's trying to indicate, hey, hello, over here. Uh, I'm really feeling like there's something out of alignment and it doesn't feel good and let's overanalyze the crap out of it until we figure it out, right? When really it's just an indicator to that you need to come back to your heart and you need to feel good about yourself and get really come home to yourself. So that's the first part. The second part is I will tell you from my own personal experience that as soon as I really started to cultivate this and really deepen into this within the presence of a relationship, not just on my own when I was feeling kick-ass in my life without, without Spencer, but when I was really beginning this whole relationship with Spencer and I was feeling this uncomfortableness of like, I don't know how to feel confident within myself within the context of a relationship. Once I started to really cultivate this, this real strong, powerful confidence and, and validation of my own self it really, really heightened the relationship. And I could feel it strengthening our foundation because I was no longer looking to him for anything. It was literally just a cherry on top. And when he would reach out, it was like there was so much lightness and there was no expectation and there was no heaviness. And there was no like, why haven't you talked to me in a week? What's going on? Like, you're such an asshole, right? It was just like, oh, hey, (laughs) how you been? Good to hear from you. It's been a while, you know, but like, Amazing. How have you been doing? I've been great. I've been having so much fun. I've been living my life to the best, ex- you know, best experience possible. Like, how are you doing? Oh, yeah, it would feel so amazing to spend time with you. And guess what? That is so much more of an energetic, magnetic, just like place to come from than from this place of just like, oh my God, I'm so glad to hear from you. It's been such a shitty week. And oh my God, yeah, you're going to just totally help me make up, finally save me from my week and have a great weekend. And let's go do something fun. Like, it's such a different shift of energy. So yeah, that's, um, that's something I want to want to leave you with today. Oh, it's always so fun to see what comes through these conversations. As always, if this is hitting home, please share this with a friend. Share this with someone that you know could really value this and use this today um, as a reminder for themselves. And if it really speaks to you, I would love for you to share this on Instagram. You know, send me a little video, tag me, let me know like what really came through for you and what you're going to start doing to shift and maybe what sort of activities you're going to start doing to heal those parts of in yourself to build that wholeness. So anyways, that's all for now. If you haven't been following me on Instagram, definitely come and join my my tribe. Um, And we also have a wonderful Facebook group. The Relax Into Love Facebook group is an an area where I've been really cultivating a whole community of women that are just truly feeling that same sense of like, I am ready to step into the next level of my relationships and self-love and are also amazing powerhouse women just like you. So come join the tribe. The the links are in the show notes below and um, ta-ta for now. 